and we are live. We are live. There Hello, strangers. Go. What's hey, up, buddy. everybody? Look at this. It's been so long. It's been like six years since we last talked. It's been at least once. Oh, no, it's been a once in a lifetime event since the last time we talked. <laughs> That's how long it's, it's been. It's it's our second 100 year storm <laughs> in like the last three years. You know, I was thinking about this. My daughter has lived through a hundred year storm in Hurricane Harvey, a yeah. once in a lifetime pandemic, a once in a lifetime winter Snow. storm. Yeah, like she is gonna be a hardened kid, man. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what to say to her. Like when she grows up and she understands what's happening, like yeah, yeah I guess this is what you live through. Did I tell you that joke one of my one of my flag football teammates made? Like he's a younger kid, he's young. Chef, in one of the funniest jokes he's ever made, and like I had no comeback ever, was we were at a tournament and we, you know, at night you're just hanging out with the whole team, we're just messing around. Sure. And he goes, he goes, man, Ram. He calls me Ram because uh, I don't think he can pronounce my last name. He's that dumb. But uh, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, he goes, damn, Ram. How was it living through the Great Recession? And I, was like, <laughs> and I was like, how do you respond to that, right? Because I'm the oldest guy on the team, of yeah. course. So uh, it, that's what it's gonna be like. You're gonna like, I'm gonna tell my daughter, yeah, you lived through this, this, and that. But yeah, it's wild, man. We'll talk about that. We've got some big news for Jose. We're gonna get to, but first, let's start with AlamoRemedy.com. AlamoRemedy.com. I'm gonna tell you what, Jose. The What's CBD up, gummies really calmed me down at night. They calmed me down, man. Every hour I was waking up for those pipes. I was like, they're going to burst. They're going to burst. But the CBD gummies from Alamo Remedy, 250 milligrams of CBD per product for only $17.99. Plus, you'll save an extra 10% off with promo code unicorn that is right free or and also free shipping 49 dollars or more they also have a bundle pack up there i don't know if it's supposed to be up there but it's still up there all their products for just 62 dollars plus 10 percent off you're not going to beat that it's a great great company for texans by texans they give back to veterans they are all about veterans getting better with cbd with hemp as well so uh yeah support them they're a great company they support us and we do get proceeds from every sale so you are helping out the show when you go go to alamoremedy.com and use promo code unicorn 10 percent off okay so big ups to alamo remedy um uh, man all right so let's get into this man the big news it's been two weeks Tom Brady wins the Super Bowl. That's our big <laughs> not joking. The big news. Jose Partita has broken free from sports radio. He no longer works at Gal Media anymore. And uh, what's it called? Sports Map Radio Network? Or is it just Sports Map Radio? What was it? It's a network or is it Sports Map it's, Radio it's, Network? It's Sports Map Radio Network. It, it, uh, it's, it's, it's a network, yeah. Yeah, so he's no longer yeah, there. It's a, it's a network. It's a network. Um yeah, it's a network in the loosest terms, but it's there. Absolutely. We're gonna Come I'm gonna throw some good. shade. I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a dick. I'm sorry. Um so Jose is no longer at Gal Media and I'm so happy for you. We didn't talk about the radio side of things on the on the podcast as much because you're still employed by the company. I didn't wanna put you in a weird position, right? But sure. man, I'm so glad you left that company. I'm so <laughs> glad you left that part of the company, especially um and you did great work there you actually cared about that place and that was your first mistake uh, because i'm <laughs> telling you and this is one thing that a lot of people don't understand it took me a while to understand as well you can care about a place you can love working at a company there might be people that care for you at the company the company in general doesn't care about you okay they will either let you go they'll throw you under the bus whatever it may be there have been several instances where they will just do that and they don't care about your well-being they don't care about your your mental health at all uh and radio is different and jose I'm, I'm just i'm just gonna go on my rant real quickly and no you dude can, do your thing i'm yeah, just chilling man um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm minding my business go they ahead. don't care that it's your day off right and like they don't need to be stressing you out for little things that nobody will care about okay like guy hey guy from the middays network show i'm sorry no one's gonna care that there's a guest from detroit that's not on or is on okay there's no need to stress people out over that so um i'm glad you left man and we'll get into the radio side of things in just a second but uh tell us how does it feel to work for a real company now <laughs> No comment. No, no comment. man. It, no, it, it's 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 a blessing, man. I, and I've I've talked about it a lot on Twitter. 
uh, about my new job and my my new opportunity. It's it's a I don't I ha- I haven't called it a dream job because I never actually dreamed of like this being a possibility like a career path for me, you know? So so it's never like it this wasn't something I thought about as a teenager or even in college, but it's it's an opportunity with a company that's growing really fast and that's really passionate mm-hmm. about sneakers and I caught them and they frankly they caught me at the perfect time. So I'm just really excited to uh, to get started and to just frankly work with and care with work with and care for so many people who are interested in in, in sneakers like I am. Which is, yeah. I mean, we talk about them all the time. We've had our, our 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 buddy Mike Sykes from USA Today on. Like, we really care about this shit, and it's just it's it's now like it's opened up a career path opportunity for me, and I couldn't be more excited, man. So tell everyone what Soul Savvy is. By the way, that's where Jose is working now, Soul Savvy. <laughs> he is a uh, community lead. Is that the correct term? Community leader, yeah. A community right. leader, and it's a really fascinating company. I'm going to give you a quick backstory, and then Jose is going to explain what Soul Savvy is and probably give you a promo code so you guys sign up. And <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> it, and, uh, um, so, what, so here's what happened. I remember when you messaged us in the group like, yo, you guys got to check out this company, Soul Savvy. They help people that are interested in actually getting shoes for themselves, right? Not the resale community, not that crap over, right? Not the the part that's been hijacked uh, right. in terms of sneaker culture, right? So what they do is, hey, you want the sneaker? It's hard to get. Well, they figured out a way to get these sneakers. Not illegal. There's no bots involved. It's just, hey, here's how you do it, right? They get you all the aspects of the launch day, all that good stuff. And I remember you messaging and you were like, this is cool because it's actually a community now. It's fun yeah. again, like what you grew up with. And fast forward to about a month ago and you're like, hey, uh, one, they got a big they got a big funding round, right? Like they got a big investment into this company. And then like a week later, you're like, hey, they're hiring for this job. Now you're going to get this job because you understand the community. You've used the yeah. platform. And I was like, don't even stress it. You got this job. You're a great worker, all that stuff. And you get the job. So you went from being part of somebody that's using it to actually wor- like working for that company and helping it grow. Yeah, man, it's 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 freaking cool. It, it really is. And and you did a pretty decent job g- job explaining what it is and to fill in kind of the gaps of what you couldn't. It's essentially a multi-platform sneaker community. So we've got podcast. We've got an app that helps you basically track every raffle for every sneaker release uh that helps you kind of organize them so you're able to do them all in one place and we've got a uh, it's a slack community it's sort of like reddit it's sort of like a discord where it's essentially like a forum and uh part of my duties is to monitor monitor and to uh maintain those forums so it's i mean you've got at just right there i've mentioned three different platforms of the community and I haven't really gotten into how it's basically everyone looks out for each other. Like I've, I don't know how, technically how much stuff I'm actually allowed to share because it's it's all obviously it's community based. It's it's a subscription based service, so you have to actually pay to be a member. But mm-hmm. I've already experienced and I've been able to do some really cool things for for our members, and it's just being able to do nice things for people of like interest has been really cool. And frankly, it's been really fulfilling. Yeah, it, it's so cool, man. Like it, it, the company is built on doing something good for people that care about the same things they care about, right? Yes. And that's why, you know, and you were telling me some of the perks of the job. You were telling me about how the company operates. And I was telling you that is a real company. Like, welcome to a real company. And I keep saying that, like, I'm sorry if, if people take offense to that or whatever. That is a real company. It's not, you know, it's not radio where, one, it's hard to get into and sure. the people that are there are sometimes absolute a-holes about it. Like, oh, you're not going to get a chance, blah, blah, blah. They, you never can grow unless you get really lucky or you burn some bridges with people you don't like. And then all of a sudden you move up or you get the right ear and you talk your way into stuff, right? And, and you whatever, right? Radio's not – it's not a good job in terms of that side of things. And then you add in the fact that it's – you're a producer, right? So it's already a perceived thing that, oh, a producer is below a host. Yeah. And and I'll say, no, some producers are just as important to a show, right? And then you get that on top of it and good luck trying to grow, right? Good luck trying to get your voice or good luck trying to actually do something creative and have someone back you. So for you to finally leave and be able to <laughs> live up to your full potential 
as a friend, as somebody who cares about you, I was so happy because now Thank you, you're working for a place that actually cares about what you do, cares about what you're going to do and cares about helping you do those things in soul savvy. So shout out to them, man. That's awesome. Um, and then also the other thing, like, I don't want to put your personal business out there, but being a producer and radio sucks because you'll never get a raise. It's impossible. Like you're just, yeah, because no, they I mean, think you're, you're so replaceable. They th they think you're so replaceable. And then when you leave, they all go like, Oh no, he's leaving us. Oh, please. Jose stay. No, no, come on. You just said you can't afford to give me a raise. And now all of a sudden you can like, stop that. The same thing I went through that. So I'm just, yeah, I, like I, that part it's, sucks. It's such a, it's, it's, I know we don't, really cuss but it's such a shit it's 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 a shitty business it's so mm -hmm. tough man you have to you have to be really really in love with it yes or you have to be just able to tolerate a bunch of shit and frankly i was never i knew i knew i was good at it and i liked sports enough to where it was a really fun job but i always knew i wanted to move on and do something else mm -hmm. and never did i dream it would be this as i've said twice now but i'm it's just it's it's a fun job until it's not fun and you realize, well, there's uh, there's something else out there for me. Let me find what that is. And that I that's not the case for everyone. I'm not going to say like that's an absolute obsolete, but that's that's that was my that was always my truth mm -hmm. there. I always had intentions of doing something else. And man, it's just for for as tough as that job is, I I made some really like important friendships and the 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 funny like or the corny the, all that matters is the friends you you made along the way mm -hmm. joke meme is i mean it's so applicable to this because i've i've i met you through that job i met some of them, i mean my best friends robert and uh and bobby and cam like i met them through that job and like they were so important to my life at the point where we all became friends and it's because of that place so like it's not like i'm leaving like bitter and pissed off it's I'm just really grateful that I met the people that I met throughout my, my time there. And I'm just so hungry and so excited for this new opportunity and this new challenge. Yeah, it's great, man. And the other thing, the thing that you mentioned is like this dream job that doesn't even exist is now your dream job. It's pretty cool because you, you really don't know what's going to happen in the world and in business and in companies where you might be stressing out like, I hate my current job, right? And, and I went through that like when I was about your age. I got burnt out with radio and I was like, what am I going to do next? Because that's all I knew. Right. And that's the same thing. Like you've spent your last six years, right? Almost six years. I grew up there. I was 21 yeah. years old when I, that's when your, I started that's what there. you know. That's yeah. everything, you know, right. From a professional standpoint, it's a scary thing. Like, what am I going to do next? Right. Because I, I don't know if I have the skill set for this or blah, 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 but you talk your way into stuff. You, you start seeing how you can apply certain things to uh, a, a job. And I was like you, like, what am I going to do next? There's no other job out there for me. Am I going to have to go to a small market? Am I just going to have to be stuck here? Um, and then what happens is you're like, well, hey, this industry is kind of growing right now, right? Social media. That's what I did after radio was become a social sure. media manager. And you just start applying to a bunch of jobs and you get, you get lucky, right? See how you can talk your way into those jobs and apply some of the skills that you learn, like I mentioned. So for those of you that are in that rut right now of like, what am I going to do next? I don't know. Like I've trained to be this. I've gone to school for this. Something's going to open up. You just got to keep your eye out for it, right? If you hadn't kept your eye out for it, if you hadn't been part of this community, if you hadn't constantly been involved in something you love, you would have never found this. There's no way yeah. you would have come across this, right? So that's your passion, right? Shoes are your passion. Shoes are what you love and you love the culture around it. And you made yourself part of that culture until something came to fruition. So I'm, I'm happy. And a lot of people are really happy for you. Omar says, Hey, what foot locker are you working at in the mall? <laughs> cool. <laughs> he's, he's just joking. Um, but that, that is one of the good things, man. Like something will open up. You just have to, you just have to be patient and just, I told you, and I've told, I tell this to everyone. If you, if you're at a job that you hate, just use that job. Think about it this way. You're getting paid to apply to jobs. <laughs> like you're getting paid yeah. to find your next job. That's what it is. Sucks because I told you companies don't care about you. They don't, right? There might be people at the company. The company in general does not care about you. That's not their. That's not their business model. They're not there to care about Jose and Raheel. They're there to care about the investors and they're care to care about people that they need to answer to and of course make money. So I'm happy you found it, man. Thank you, man. I, I'm just. I'm like I've said. I feel so, just so blessed and ambitious as hell. Like I haven't yeah. felt this ambitious and this like. Why can't I do this in like in two years? Like, why can't 
like I just grow into like a totally different person professionally with this company. Like, frankly, I haven't felt that in a while. So it's it's exciting yeah. to feel that. I have so I have goals. I, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm like a a hundred percent like a goal oriented person, but I yeah. I do have goals now, and that's that's exciting. So we can agree one two three that that company you no longer work for. It's it's a blessing to be out of. Right? You're happy you left. Yes. Yes. I okay. mean, I well, definitely I definitely cried my last day. I definitely I, was. I mean, we left. Okay, our now terms, we're gonna but... now we're gonna now we're gonna have now we're gonna have some fun real quick. And by the way, okay. Trey's gonna be joining us for uh, all the uh, 100K Trey fans out there. All right, if, for those of you that are tuned in just to watch Trey, he's gonna be joining us in about five minutes. I'm gonna bring him on. Um, but now the fun stuff starts real quickly about this. The, the okay. last week, I'm gonna get some, I'm gonna give some personal stuff here. So Jose, we found out that you were gonna leave. We being me, my wife, my daughter, because I was on the couch and my like when you called me. My wife's like, what is is everything okay with Jose? What's wrong? And we're like, no, Jose, Jose actually got the job I was telling you about, so that's awesome. And immediately, you said I don't you, know if, you rejected my call the first time. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. I no, I don't think it went through. I don't think it went through. I don't think. Sorry, what were you saying? So I don't know if you could hear in the background, but the conversation was this: Jose tells me, "Hey, um, look, uh, I got the job," and I told him, "Well, you got to tell the company that you're leaving, and your last day is tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> I said screw them. I was like, screw them. Don't don't worry. Oh, don't worry about them. They're big boys. They're gonna figure out stuff. I don't know if you could hear my wife in the background, but she was like, yeah, tell them to leave tomorrow. Screw that. No. You didn't hear that? No, I didn't. <laughs> so she was in the background when she heard me. She was like, yeah, tell them to leave tomorrow. Tell them don't even give them two weeks. Yeah, tell them you can't. Tell them oh, you if I would have heard job. that, I would have been dying. <laughs> So I told you to leave that place the next day. Don't even give them a two week notice because you yeah. have to start work. You actually did have to start pretty early uh, mm -hmm. at Soul Savvy. So, um, and then you're like, no, I'm gonna give them the week and blah blah blah. And I said, hey, you know what they did to all your best friends <laughs> at that company? They screwed each and every one they of them. They fired every single one. The, of them. Yeah, they fired every. And not only that, they fired all the minorities. Bobby Beats, rest <laughs> in peace. Raheel, rest in peace. And you sold out, and you didn't didn't leave them hanging. So <laughs> screw you, Jose. <laughs> How do you feel? How do you feel not avenging the death of your friends? I feel blessed. I won. No. <laughs> I won. I feel blessed. My friends gonna be all right. They're all they're all in better situations now. They're all, which is kind of an indictment. Yeah, but still, I want I wanted them to be panicking. But I mean, they were. They frankly, I didn't want to talk about this, but they were panicking, and mm -hmm. there's they are, buddy. They're panicking, and yeah. I don't know. Maybe hopefully this this just this just teaches them to take better care of their their producers because there's some really good guys there. Ain't gonna happen. That's Ain't all gonna I gotta happen, say, about buddy. It. Ain't gonna happen. Now we gotta get the last one out. Actually, there's two more people I want out. Beautiful and uh, MC. I'm gonna leave sure. it there. I'm, yeah, time to get them out of there. Time to get them out of there. Let them break free. But man, I'm really happy for you, dude. Thank it's so cool to see you uh, actually work at a company that is gonna appreciate you. <laughs> um, and also for you to be part of something you're passionate about. That's That's the goal, man, is like, be part of something you care about and passionate about. Exactly. Now, and uh, when's, wh when are we going to get the hookups on the shoes, bro? When are you going to hook us bro, up? Bro, you know what was the funniest <laughs> thing? Like, my last week explaining to everyone, like, what I'm going to be doing now and everyone just assuming I was going to start hooking them up with shoes. Like, people I hardly even talk to just assuming that they could just come to me for for shoes. Yeah, you're not like you're not gonna get them, guys. Did you see? So uh, I want to give some love to Jordan Brand real quickly. Uh, I got some of the new Westbrooks, and I posted about it yesterday. And there's a uh -huh. follower on. I don't even know who she is. Okay, like I, they, I guess you just find each other on with hashtags or whatever, right? Sure. And she's like, "Hey, can you tell me who your sneaker plug is?" I'm like, oh, "What? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not even a sneak. It's sneakers app. That's who the plug is." <laughs> hey, shout out to those mm. Westbrook fours. The Westbrook fours are awesome shoes if you actually hoop and you like playing basketball those are shoes stop being, an elite. Those. Stop being a basketball shoe elitist yeah let people a, wear what they want to wear where they want to no. wear them wear tester reheal what's up yeah. I'm, gonna be on wear, I'm gonna join wear testers and take you down <laughs> go for it hey okay let's bring on trey because trey is actually one of us as well he was uh in the media once upon a time and he also left a media company and he is now 
I'm dubbing him 100K Trey. Congratulations, Hello. Trey. Look at you, Mr. 100K on TikTok <laughs> now. Trey, what's up, man? Hey, no, first what up, off, Trey? hey, good, nice to meet you guys. Thank y'all for having me, man. I'm, uh, yeah, for, first off, I have a lot to say about y'all, what y'all were talking about earlier. <laughs> Oh man, it's a it's Yo. a tough business, both radio and TV. You know, it's mm -hmm. it's a, it's it's just one of those kind of businesses. But like you said, man, you gotta just you gotta take a chance and kind of do whatever you're gonna do. I was uh, on the CW for a few years and doing that, and uh, you know, pandemic hit, all sorts of stuff started to happen, and uh, company went in a new direction. I respectfully bowed out and said, "Hey, gotta go," and uh, I left. And uh, oddly, this weird stuff on TikTok and social media is picking up, and it's opened up a door that I never thought would open up. And um, dude, it's awesome. It's awesome, you know, it's, yeah. That's the thing, man, like creative people, hardworking people, good people will win in the end. I tweeted that the day I found out Jose actually got the job, I couldn't say anything, but I tweeted that if you work hard, work hard and you're kind, you're gonna win. Like that's yeah. just, that formula does not fail. So to, to see you actually win as well, Trey, 100K today on TikTok, that's incredible, man. That's an awesome you. thing. You put out great content. Um, you're one of the rare TikTokers that I like if I don't see your TikTok and I'm not on TikTok and what I mean by seeing your TikTok because you share it on Twitter as it, yeah. well. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I got to see Trey. I got to see what Trey is uh, <laughs> tweeting out there, how you're messing with your husband. Like he's probably like, Trey, can you can you go do something, please? Can you leave me alone? Stop putting me on content all the time, Trey. He um, likes it. He likes it. He low-key likes it. He's always like, hey, don't forget to tag me. So yeah. it's it's a bit to, it's it's become a bit to him as well now, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, well, the, the thing I do with my husband actually, it's actually kind of that that's the one that really took off, and it's it's insane. But there's a it it it's taken off, and a lot of people relate to it because it's relatable. It's you know, everyone has things they don't like about their style. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. Like you know, everyone, yeah. like one of those, the, the dishes thing, my wife hates that about me. Where my, I'll just leave a dish in the sink. I don't care. Like at least I'll put it in. I know your husband will just kind of leave it on the side. I'll put it in the sink, but I'll wash them later. I don't want to you know wash it ASAP. And that's relatable to even if you have a roommate. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's just stuff that just, and also, I mean, I think we kind of noticed it now that we're in the pandemic. We've been home for so long and just kind of, <laughs> you know, things are kind of, you know, you notice things that you didn't notice before. So yeah. <laughs> Any couple that makes it through the pandemic, they were meant for each other, for real. And they're, like, meant, they're, they're meant for life, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So Trey, you uh, you were at the CW, you were on Morning Dose for a, a while there, and and, and I, I do want to get your thoughts on this. We will talk about yeah. Framing Britney Spears, of course. Uh, the great documentary that just came out from the New York Times. It's available on Hulu. If you haven't watched it, watch it ASAP. Uh, we'll talk about stuff, but it, it, I, we'll get into that conversation in just a bit, but your thoughts on just everything with the media like it is it's one of those industries for whatever reason they treat a lot of people like crap and it's rare like it's it's weird i don't know why that happens i think it's a it's a weird give and take if you think about it so they can treat you like that but then you also have a lot of people in the business with egos that think they aren't replaceable and they think mm -hmm. you know they can get by and just kind of do whatever because oh they can't replace me so it's kind of a weird, you know, I can see where they don't care about you, but you are replaceable, but you're not replaceable. And it just, you know, it's a weird kind of balance. And it's just, I mean, I, I've said it many times because I started off in news back in 2008. Um, I moved up here. I actually started, was one of the producers hired to, to do News Fix in 2010. So I did that for a few years and then I left in 2015, did, did some PR and then I went back. So it's a love hate. You know, mm -hmm. it's, everyone yeah. says, that. everyone says you leave, you come back, you leave and come back. Right now I'm gone. And um, right now I, I mean, I want to go back sometimes, but sometimes I don't. And then just right now it's a weird time to even analyze all that because it's just a weird time. You know, we still yeah. haven't gotten, it's just weird. Why, why do I want to go interview somewhere right now and wearing a mask and how, and how am I going to train in a new, you know what I mean? Like, all of that kind of just messes with you. So right now I'm just like, whatever. Just take <laughs> just time, to, to taking my time. And like I said, this kind of social media stuff is kind of a weird thing that's, that's taken off. So I'm actually putting myself into that more because it's like, hey, we have the time right now. We have Wi-Fi. <laughs> so let's do it. You know what I mean? So it's been, it. it's kind of like, a, I mean, and Raheel and I talk about this a lot, pretty much with everyone we've had on in the pod, on the podcast. It's been like, obviously it's a difficult time. We've lost half a million people all, uh, to the to the virus, but it's, it's been kind of like an age of exploration for everyone and like yeah. self-discovery, which that's kind of a blessing, truthfully, after just a freaking disaster the last, what, 
Oh, we're, we're almost, almost at a year, year already. Yeah. yeah. It, no, it started, it started, it started, it started last February. I remember, I remember, well, for, it started a little before, but it started to hit the Houston area because I remember starting to do stories on Morning Dose about yeah. the virus in February. Mm-hmm. And then a few weeks later, what actually was spring break. That's when we shut down because that's when the rodeo got canceled. And yeah. so it, it, but you're right though. It, um, the pandemic's changed even, it was changing TV. We weren't having to go out and do interviews anymore because everything, it changed the way TV looks. You're watching TV now, you're watching all these Zoom calls and all these Skype interviews and all this. It's changed everything. And I think it's real. I mean, the fact that we produced shows from home, we never thought you could have a producer at home connected the way we were connected and producing a show. You always had that, you know, even we've had, we had a director directing a show from home. That's, how do you do that? You know, but we did it. So again, it's, it's changed. It's changed a lot. And I think the TV business, especially the news business, has a little catching up to do because I think they're still trying to operate a lot of the old ways. And they're still, you still have your old viewers that hold on to like the people who have been there for, for you know, the, the, the Dave Wards, you know, the, 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 the icons. Yeah. And but that was an old mentality of working. And now they're trying to squeeze in this new mentality. And it's just kind of a that's where you have a lot of people wanting to leave the business or not wanting to leave the business or wanting to join the business. And it's just a weird it's, it's a weird time. It's, it's, it's a changing time. So, you yeah, know? it's a it's a it, it is a fun time, though. Like, you know, I do stuff with ABC 13 on the side and uh, you've got a dear friend in Mater there who's uh man, she's just killing it as well. So it's awesome. Uh, but they are, you know, like it's cool. Like we'll do an episode of No Layups. Nuno uses that sound yeah. on the news like it looks it is from StreamYard and it's totally acceptable. That would not have been acceptable last year yeah. to, to play a Zoom call as a as a soundbite would have been it, like you would have been you've been fired. It felt like. But, you know, everyone, most people are adapting. It's like it's just part of it now. Well, also another thing, um, when the pandemic first hit, I was shooting stories on my iPhone and yep. editing them and sending them to the station. And when you watch it on air, you have no idea. I edit that on my phone. And I shot it on my phone, but you don't, again, it's changing the business. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to say you don't need cameramen, but sometimes you don't need them. And, you know, I mean, you can be your one man band and kind of do, I mean, again, it's a whole changing industry and it's just a, it's, it's an interesting time. And uh, yeah, it's just an industry. It's just, yeah. It's Trey, weird. hold on. What, Trey, what was the, uh, what was the editing tool that CW used? Was it Movielicious, Clipalicious? It was something alicious. Do you remember that? <laughs> what? So I did sport. Remember, I, I, I did sports. You did a, in the, oh, you yeah. Did. Yeah, so I did like sports updates, and uh, I think it was Gary, right? Gary at the time was the was he the GM Gary Jaffe, direct- yeah, yeah. He was the yeah the news director, I guess you could say. And then he would always be like, "Hey, and if you ever want to shoot a story, we've got this software you can edit on your iPhone." He was so excited about it. I was like, "Movie licious or clip? I I can't remember what it was. I, I use, every time I, I talk booty licious. Was it? Was it no, bootylicious? No, it wasn't. It wasn't bootylicious. <laughs> <laughs> Old school Beyonce there. Um, Destiny's Child, actually. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to throw that in. I was like, I don't know if you remember. I think it's Clipalicious. I'm gonna look it up. Jose, <laughs> what was, oh man, I'm gonna look it up because I'm gonna go crazy if I don't find this. I'm gonna send Gary a message on Facebook. And I, that was probably after I was gone because I, I left in 2015. So yeah, there was a, a lot of stuff going on there that I wasn't aware of. So Clipalicious, That's- Clipalicious is a hair salon. No, that's, that's what happens when you look up Clipalicious on Twitter. I mean, excuse me, on Google. It was something delicious. I've, I, I found a couple of Clipalicious. Uh, Be careful what you're Googling, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. want to go there. Let me get it. Let me open an incognito window real quick. Um, so, hey, man, how um, so how is it being on TikTok uh, with that kind of following? Um, some, I mean, your TikToks reach more people than you would have at CW or yeah. a- anywhere, right? Like it's just the, the, it cha- the nature of the beast has changed. How is it doing that on a daily basis now? The weird thing is when I got on it, so my coworker, I was at the CW when my coworkers got on it and they were like all doing it. And I remember thinking, I was like, oh, like I wasn't going to get on it. And I was like, y'all are kind of silly. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to touch that, whatever. And then um, I downloaded it though, just to check it out and see what's going on. It wasn't until I actually left that I was just here at home one day and I started to, to post, I, I watched a lot for months and months and then I posted my first video. My situation happened backwards because I feel a lot of people when they get on social or they get on, on, on Instagram to sell something, they have something to offer. You know, they have like a product or, or they, a jewelry or whatever they're doing. I didn't have anything. I was just kind of doing stuff that I thought was kind of funny. And then that built up on that. That's how I built my audience, I guess you could say. And then I kind of started, that's when I started to really, after that, people started reaching out to me and brands started reaching out to me saying like, hey, we want to partner with you on this and this. And I'm like, holy crap, what? You know, I was like, with me? I was like, I have nothing to, but that's how, that's how it started for me. So it was a backward situation where people jumped on board just to see, I guess, my stupid stuff. And then now, I, now I've been kind of 
gearing it toward a certain audience and developing that more. So it was, it's, it's been weird, but it's been cool. That's really cool, man. Uh, have you guys watched the documentary Fake Famous yet on HBO? No, I have not. So I'll give you the premise of this real quickly. On HBO um, Max? HBO Max. Yeah, sorry, HBO Max. Um, so what it is, it's um, the director, his plan is we're going to take three people that are on social media, but they're not huge, right? Like under maybe a thousand followers, 2000 followers. And what they're going to do is they're going to rig the game. So they're going to start buying followers, buying interactions mm. and see how long before they can get one of those or all three of them be to become influencers where they're actually making money off of this. They're uh, getting products sent to them and all that. And then the, the mental effect of all of this, it's a fascinating documentary, man. It's, I mean, we all know about it. I think yeah. we're all tuned in into the effects and impacts of social media, what it can do to you. But man, this documentary is really good. Highly recommend it. I watched it in the last two weeks when we weren't on the podcast, but uh, Fake Famous is the name of the documentary. And it just reminds me of what you're going through. It's like all of a sudden things start heating up and all of a sudden you yeah. get this big following. People want to work with you. You're like, what? what is happening? It's so crazy how fast it happens too. It's There's another good documentary on Hulu. Uh, it's an ABC one. It's I don't know the title of it, but it's about OnlyFans. And I know whenever you hear mm. that, everyone's like, oh, you know, whatever. It's a because it, it takes... <laughs> OnlyFans wasn't a porn thing at all. It used to be, it was, it, they were trying to be legitimate, but it, it follows these people, basically their journey of how some of them use it for certain things and then some of them use it for sex and how it's grown into this social media over the pandemic and how, how they basically been able to profit off that and, and make a living off of not necessarily selling sex, but just selling different things. And it's a very fascinating, just, but again, it's, it ties into the whole people reaching out to you and kind of this whole dynamic of connecting with people in a whole different way, so... God, I can't remember the name. The Netflix one. We talked about it a little bit. The one about being hooked on social media, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, with yeah. the really corny, uh, the like narrative story. Yeah. Tied to oh, it. That man. one was. That one was I a little the name. That was the really social good. dilemma. The social dilemma. There, there you, you go. go. Yeah. There's actually I have an episode on this podcast feed. You have to go back to I think season two, but with Meredith, one of my friends, she's on OnlyFans and she lives out in uh, Santa Monica now. And she tweets about it like she she makes a hundred hundred k easily yeah. like she's making six figures, enjoying life, doing the OnlyFans thing, and she loves it like that's her thing. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, I was like, if someone's into feet, I'll show my feet. <laughs> I'll get on OnlyFans, <laughs> I'll, whatever floats your boat. I mean, I'll, I'll do. I mean, it's very fascinating. To, I mean, I know that that's a little silly, but I mean, hey, that's actually a thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. it's it's a strange world we live in. The yeah. documentary uh, Trey's referring to is uh, OnlyFans selling sexy on Hulu. Yeah, there you go. Really, really uh, good one. And there's an actually ABC a girl, there's a girl from Houston they interview and how she's making six <clears throat> figures now. She's from Houston and how she started to, to do her thing. So, yeah, man, love that. Go get it. It's just easier now, man. You don't there's get no the bag. Get, get the, the bag. bag. Get famous, man. There's no gateway keepers now. That's what I love, man. Yeah. No gatekeepers now. You don't have to to go up to a news director and be like, "Hey, I can really do this job," and and yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it for way less than anybody. Yeah, I'll do a one man band, and I just want to get on TV. No, now if you're good, you're gonna get noticed, and yeah, that's, that's one of the true. cool things. Social media is really. There's a lot of bad things with social media, but there's a lot of good things in that. Anybody can pull up their chair. And I think I think that's why I think that's why radio and TV is also struggling because they're still with that old mentality. If there's people on social media with bigger audiences and better storytellers than some of the reporters you have out there right now. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're not tapping into being more savvy and making people do more, you're, you're losing. I mean, that's why TV people look really funny trying to relate. And you can tell when they don't know what they're really talking yeah. about, but they're just reading a script or whatever. So, you know, what I mean, I think they need to move away from reading scripts and reading prompters and being more interactive because that's what people are really into right now. I mean, we have YouTubers making millions yeah. of stupid kids, YouTube videos. Kid you know, kids, YouTubers. Kids, kid yeah. YouTubers. Uh, Mara Moreno is joining us, by the way. She's on. Hey. She's Speaking of, uh, as you're throwing shade at TV personalities. <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Myra is awesome. my girl. I, I support her 100% everything yeah. she does. I, love I was her. giving all of ABC 13 reporters, anchors, props yesterday on No Layups, man. Um, from Erica, Mara, everybody. Like, it's not just, hey, here's my update. I mean, they're doing Instagram lives. They're on Twitter answering questions. It's twenty four seven, man. Erica um, Simon's great too. Like Erica Simon yeah. and Myra and all the yeah, they're all really, really good about. And that's what I feel yeah. TV stations need to really mm -hmm. hone in on because that's the future. And it, they look silly trying to still have the old school mentality. Yeah. And, but whatever, you yeah, know, what do yeah. I know? <laughs> We're done throwing hey, shade now. Not not our problem anymore. 
Yeah. 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 We're free now. Actually, I'm I'm not, but you two are <laughs> yeah. free. That's what I'm talking about. Get out of there. <laughs> okay, so uh, Trey, the reason we brought you on uh, mainly was because of the fascinating documentary that we watched, uh, Framing Britney Spears. Before I even watched it, uh, I knew you were the biggest Britney fan that <laughs> I know on social media. So uh, you got your shirt on, um, and it was – look. I, I, I grew up with that whole era. I When I was in middle school, Britney's just getting hot. I had posters of Britney in my locker, right? Uh, I saw your wall. NSYNC tweet. I saw your NSYNC yeah, tweet. Yeah, <laughs> you saw my NSYNC tweet, right? Like, I grew up with that era, right? Like, that was it. Yeah. Uh, I made fun of stuff that Britney got, went through, right? Like, I made fun of her when, when Justin Timberlake puts out Cry Me a River. I'm like, yo, that hoe, right? Like, I'm saying all these things, right? Like, I went through that. And then to get the other side of it now, and yeah. to see what exactly was going on, because I didn't know all that. I yeah. felt like crap after watching that. I was like, dang, I shouldn't have made that joke, right? When Britney goes bald, we're like, everyone teed off on her, right? Like, yeah, everyone. Dude, I dressed up as bald Britney in 2016. Yeah, I saw you, you know? tweet. I mean, yeah, I saw yeah, you post you know, I mean, I, I, I took, we all took cheap shots. I mean, you yeah. know, but. So I'm just going to open it up to you first. Um, I mean, free flow of thoughts, man. Just thoughts of the documentary, everything that you saw from it, and yeah. uh, anything else. Well, on December 2nd, 1981, Britney Spears... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I mean, like you said, though, we grew, up, we grew up in that time when it was the 90s, grunge was still, alternative was like the music, it transitioned to pop, it was Backstreet Boys and NSYNC, and then Britney comes on board. And the documentary talks about that, but even before the documentary, so like, we saw her rise to fame, huge, before social media. She was massive. The amounts that, of records that she sold was huge. So mm -hmm. we saw the rise. Then we saw kind of the fall from grace. We saw, you know, the breakup. We saw her get married. Or, you know, she became the bad girl. She was with Kevin and, you know, running around, whatever. Then they get married. They had kids. And then, you know, the big breakdown happens. Then the conservatorship started. So the breakdown happens. The conservatorship starts. Try to get her back on track. And back then, when that was happening as, like, a, as a huge fan, we viewed it as, oh, you know, they're helping her get back on track. This is good for her. You know, she's coming back slowly, whatever. So, but we, there was always something that was a little off. We didn't know what it was. You know, when people thought, hey, maybe it was like stress or mental illness or whatever. But I mean, even there was a documentary in 2008 that she shot. It was during like the circus area, the circus era. And um, she flat out says, I am miserable. I'm sad. This is like, and you know, the fact that we didn't pay attention back then, again, because even the huge Britney fans back then were like, no, no, you know what? She doesn't know what she's talking about. It's okay. You know, she had the big breakdown. She shaved her head. You know, she's going a little crazy. It's a good thing. You know, so I think that's how we all felt. But then, like you said, the documentary for people who haven't seen it, you get the flip side of what was really happening. And I think the, the, the part, there was a lot of it that didn't surprise me. I remember going, seeing all of that stuff and, and going through all of it. But the part that really surprised me was the night of the big breakdown with the, with the umbrella. Yeah. To have somebody who had just had these babies, she's probably going through, I mean, you're, first off, women have the toughest job in the world having to give birth and their bodies change and all of that stuff. And that, that's heavy. Add on the level of fame that she had, the custody battle. She wanted to see her kids that day and her ex-husband was saying, no, you can't come see your kids. And you had people following you with a camera. Any woman would have gone up. Any, yep. any parent would have gone up, you know? And you watch it, you're just like, damn. Like, it's, it, you know, it was just, it was just messed up the way it all unraveled and it kind of unfolded. But that, that's what people who've seen the documentary now, it's like, okay, you know, now we get that side of it. And um, I just thought it was, I just think it's a great documentary because it opened up not only my perspective as a fan to what was really going on, but people who had no idea now get what was really going on. And mm -hmm. I mean, when, as a fan for many, many years and posting all the stuff I would post, it would actually really annoy me when people would um, send me a message and be like, hey, you know, like I saw her on, on Instagram today. What's wrong with her? Blah, blah. She looks cuckoo, this and this, you know, like asking what's going on. And, you know, we had our suspicions and we kind of, you know, suspected what was going on. But I, I never knew how to respond to that because I was like, well, do you really want to know what's going on? Or do you want to just like get a confirmation that she's crazy and let's move along? Because that's what people really wanted because she was a punching bag for so many years, you know? And yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling on now because it's just like, but yeah, it was just form. a... Yeah, it was just a really good, like I said, it was a good documentary. It opened up a lot, a lot, lot of conversation to what I think we were also back then as, um, as a culture. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I had a huge problem with after this documentary aired was there was a, the whole Justin apology. Ugh. 
Let me get a sip of water for this real fast. I'm going to pause you on that one, Jose. Because, yeah, we want to spend time yeah. on the Justin apology. Oh, Jose, yeah. What would you have? I Go, I mean, yeah. I, I was probably... God, how, I, was, I, would def, I wasn't I was a teenager when Britney was in her heyday. I no. was probably 10, 10, 11, 12. And just, it just astonished... It, what was surprised me the most is just how almost dehumanizing it was. Well, not even <laughs> almost. It was definitely it was. dehumanizing the way they treated her. And the part that ast- just astonished me the most was... That clip where in in the documentary where she's doing a promo uh, interview over the phone, and uh, those interviews are all supposed to be fluff interviews when you're promoting whether it's a book or an album or whatever it may be, and they ask her about a custody battle. Yeah, like yeah. that was astonishing, and just like all the tabloid stuff, which I obviously didn't have, to, I didn't grow through all of that. I would I remember going to like the grocery store and seeing tabloids, but never like. I I was I was never aware of stuff like that, but man, people were relentless towards her, and the 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 paparazzi guy who they interview in the in 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 the doc just was so tone deaf. Yeah, yeah. just could the not. One where, yeah, the one he goes wrap his uh. head around like the concept that they negatively impacted her, yep. impacted her mental health. He just refused to even acknowledge that. It was just it's just an indictment of like how terrible they treated her. Like that doesn't happen today. Like. Yeah. How I, we still have so much work to do with mental health uh, advocacy, especially with celebrity culture. Like, na- like I feel like we still make fun of. Uh, I, I use "we" as a relative word for society. Yeah. Just make fun of celebrities who openly talk about their their mental health issues, and mm-hmm. like n- that's not even a thought. That wasn't even a thought then. Everyone was just like, "Oh, she's crazy." Mm-hmm. Like, I wonder just... if things would have been different if Britney had gone through what she had gone through today. Would things have been different? Because there is more of a focus on mental health. And now we're still behind, as you mentioned, Jose, but there's still more of a focus and ability to relate and hopefully for that person to get help and not get berated, right? Like, look at what Demi Lovato just went through, right? Right. Like, when I see stuff about her, it's not, hey, let's just make fun of Demi. It's, hey, you know, Demi went through this tough thing. Let's not make fun. You know, like, let's be there for her, right? We as in society. I wonder if things would have been a little different. Is that a question for me? Because I have yeah. really big... You know what was? Yeah. Uh, what, what I was thinking of right now was it wouldn't happen today because the documentary points this out. Instagram and social media plays a huge... We're not, mm-hmm. we're not craving what celebrities are doing because we can see for ourselves now. We can mm-hmm. connect with celebrities That's ourselves. Back in the day, it was you got to hound them and you got to get that picture and you got to do whatever. And that, that cold... She was one of the stars back then that created that culture i mean and it was i mean it was huge and then the other thing i mean she got asked so many times back in the day i mean the documentary couldn't show all the clips i can show i can pull up the clips and send them to everyone who wants them send me an email and i'll send them out but she was asked so many times about her virginity about her boobs yes. about oh. numerous oh, times i forgot numerous about that times, numerous times not just once not just twice at huge press conferences for promoting her tour they're like oh you said a year ago that you were a virgin have you how have you made up on that like what the an adult asking a child if she's had yeah, sex uh, like you don't do that you don't do that and and that, oh it's it's so enraging it's it's enraging because I mean it wouldn't happen today I mean Billie Eilish is singing about God knows what and all of this heavy stuff she's a child and no one bats an eye mm-hmm. Britney was crucified when she came out yeah. on a schoolgirl outfit. She's the Antichrist. Uh, they, were, they, they were burning her CDs. I remember the articles. Yep. They were parents burning her. I mean, oh, my God. It drives me crazy. Because I remember as a kid growing up and watching that, I was just kind of like, well, like. Is it that know, serious? Yeah. Is, yeah. Is it that serious? I, I was very confused about it. I was like, wow, is it really bad that she's showing her belly and she's in a, a schoolgirl outfit? I mean, I, I guess I can see the religious aspect of that. But, I mean. The way I always justified it, I remember back in the day, I was like, oh, well, Madonna was worse. And I remember my sisters watching Madonna and thinking like, oh, you know, like, but man, they crucified her for that. And she, there, I mean, there's so many clips of her also talking about it. Because then Christina comes out and does her thing and becomes then ex Tina and the whole dirty thing. That was controversial, but they didn't crucify her the way they did Britney. Britney was like, she couldn't do anything that was remotely adultish (laughs) without getting hammered to the wall. You know, it was insane. So. so let's talk about uh, Justin's apology. 
Um, <laughs> I don't know if you retweeted it or if I just saw a tweet, but it was pretty funny. Somebody said, like most women in their 30s, their high school boyfriend is now apologizing to them for the way they treated them in high <laughs> school. <laughs> I saw somebody tweet that. It was so <laughs> funny. And it was so true. Yeah. <laughs> um, what did you... Okay, break down the apology. What did you think about it? So for, the first thing that pissed me off about the apology was the fans and just people in general were like, Justin needs to apologize and blah, 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 blah. That pissed me off because number one, here's the thing. When Justin and Brittany were, I thought back to when I was in my 20s and my friendships and relationships, I messed up a lot, a lot. I did things that I look back on, I'm like, man, that was really messed up. So that's number one for him. He dealt with that, you know, as, as a man and in his 20s. So all these people now, all these keyboard warriors, like, oh, apologize, apologize. Where were you all 20 years ago? No one batted mm -hmm. an eye to it. Why? Because we loved it. It was the Perez Hilton, the, that culture of the putting stuff on the blogs and Justin used it to help sell records. Awesome. We bought it, Crimea River. Ooh, the Britney lookalike. Dude, that's scandalous. And, it, and that was awesome. Britney comes out a year later with her song, Every Time. Oh, there's a line in there. It's, it's her rebuttal song. And she, the, the literal line is, my weakness caused you pain and this song's my sorry. Boom, she cheated. Oh my God. That, that was, so we bought into it. We fed into it. We were all a part of it. So the fact that everyone's now going to Justin saying, you need to apologize. No, he didn't have to apologize. Because I feel also, it was 20 something years ago. I'm sure they both moved on from it. I'm yeah. sure, I mean, Britney has posted stuff, dancing to his songs and tagging him on social. So I'm pretty sure they're good. What I did like about Justin's apology was he acknowledged the culture and what he took advantage of. And that's the part I wish that people would have focused on instead of making him apologize to Britney when they both mutually benefited from the breakup in some way. She did too. She went on and did some interviews and she put some stuff on her album and, and did stuff. So, you know, that, that's the part that just really annoyed me with the, with the apology. But I, I didn't feel like it had to. But like I said, I like that he acknowledged what he did in regards to the culture and society back then. So You guys could probably speak better uh, about this than me because I was a lot younger. But the Janet Jackson aspect... <laughs> Yeah, was the, because I just remember like people just relentlessly just killing Janet Jackson for that when that wasn't even her fault. Yeah, and, that was and like, like Janet Jackson got th she got thrown out of the limelight because of that, and yeah. it thrusted Justin Timberlake into next level stardom. Like it took off because after that Super Bowl, uh, then he put out that album in two thousand seven or when six. What was that Super Bowl? I don't even remember. That one was uh, it, the, it was in Houston, two thousand uh, two thousand three. Oh, in two thousand three, wow. okay. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because I remember I came here. I was in I was in San Antonio for one year of school there, so I drove back for the Super Bowl to go like that was check in two thousand four. Two thousand four. So oh okay. three oh four season, right? Um, and then he put out his next album in 06, I want to say, that had Cry Me a River and uh, what was it? Uh, was it Future? Was it no, Future? I think, uh, yeah, Future Sex next Love Sounds came out in 2006. That was after Cry Me a Me River was his first yeah. album. Sorry, that yeah. was his first album. That was on Justified. That song was on Justified. My fault. But yeah, his next album like catapulted him to superstardom. He didn't suffer a single issue benefit, from yeah. that performance. Nothing. And he got way more famous, and Janet was like, "We haven't heard from Janet in a while now." Yeah, <laughs> but but again, why? But why? Again, to 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 your point though, mm -hmm. we his album didn't just sell itself. We bought yeah. it. We yeah. supported it. You know, I mean, so I mean, we're just as much as to blame as you know. But that's what I'm saying. It, it makes me mad that there everyone wants an apology from him and him to own something, but we collective as a society need to own it because we were yeah. all jerks. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Yo, his his performance though, for real though, on the Victoria's Secret uh, fashion show, one of the better ones. Okay, I don't remember that. I don't remember, you don't remember that. that? Uh -oh. oh seven, oh six, oh seven, son. It's up there with the Kanye performance, where it was pretty damn good. Okay, and uh, by jacket. the way, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty damn good. Um, okay, so we talked about the apology. Let's talk about the conservatorship. I I hate saying that word. It's so hard for me. Um, I didn't know that was happening. By the way, I had zero idea that was happening. I wasn't. After, like, you know, uh, Circus Britney, yeah. I kind of tuned out, although there's some bangers on that uh, on that album, of course. But I didn't know that was happening to her. I had no idea. Um, yeah. That was crazy. I think a lot of, I mean, I remember Bill and Ryan, the, when she, they were talking about her on the morning show one, one time when she was doing an, an interview. And I remember back then they, they, they were a little mean spirited because they were like, oh, like she was awkward and like, there was a like random disconnect because they asked her a question that wasn't on the whatever, whatever. And someone, that's why, because 
she was under so much control. It wasn't, you know, I, and I remember when that episode aired, I remember one, I remember I was actually trying to call in because I wanted to be like, I can explain this to you all. <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it was just kind of a messed up situation. But like I said, I think for a while we were all supportive of it because we saw her doing better, but it wasn't until there was, we started, it was more insider stuff in the whole Britney fan forum, you know? So it kind of seemed like it was just a very Britney fan thing. But mm -hmm. it, it was stuff that, that we noticed and stuff that, you know, in, in interviews, journalists were saying like, dude, I mean, it wasn't just, you know, there's a difference from having a, a, a big star that you're going to interview and having, you know, boundaries put in place and that's normal. But everything was her was always abnormal. And then to add, to add on top of that, she became very socially awkward. I mean, you can, there's many videos you can watch. I mean, her demeanor changed in public. She looked nervous and stiff and weird. And there was always rumors about her you know, having nervous breakdowns on the set of The X Factor, like in 2011. So I mean, she was still doing her thing and still touring and putting out CDs, but there was just a very weird factor to it. And it wasn't until just the rumors really started to amplify. And then the, like in the documentary, when they, those girls talk about that voicemail they got, and that's what set things off about, I want to say about two years ago, because I remember that's when the whole Free Britney thing started. And that's when fans really stepped up and were like, okay, this is really, really serious. So we all seem like the crazy, you know, Britney fans, you know, putting the message out, but then this documentary has brought it to people who would never even talk about it. And they're just like, holy crap. They're like, that was what was really going on. And that's what's really going on, you know? So it's crazy. Crazy, man. Uh, we highly recommend this documentary. It's a, it's a must watch. You'll learn a lot from it. It's a chance to relive, you know, your childhood, your teenage years, all that good stuff as well. But you learn a lot about what was happening in the culture as well. Um, Jose, any last thoughts on the documentary? I just want a clear, uh, I guess, a clarification on the news that happened. Was it last week or two weeks ago? Trey, I know, you have, I know, you I know. Give what... us the update because I remember that. I, I remember it being good news. Yes. That's all I remember. It was. It did have to do with her conservatorship, but yeah. I don't remember specifically what it was. So the good news is they're slowly pushing her dad out of it. Her dad no longer has sole ownership of her estate. It's between okay, her dad right. now and a bank. They both. So if her dad wants to do anything with her money or what anything, it has to be approved. They both have to mutually agree on it. So that's one step of pushing them off. Also, her mom got approved for something. And I forgot what it was specifically. But so there's there's progress being made. And even the makers of the documentary are thinking about releasing a little bit more that maybe made the cutting room floor because there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot more they can release. And they also want to make another documentary um to kind of follow what's going on right now because it's far from over and it's going to continue and i think also netflix is coming out with a documentary so there's a lot of people <laughs> of course they are uh, right yeah. i mean and you know what and, and i saw a tweet earlier they're like oh you know <clears throat> how about we actually help her instead of trying to profit from her misfortune sure. but in the same sense also i'm on this podcast talking to two because guys who that. might have not had any idea about this so it's actually a really good thing so you know what the more publicity it gets the more the better it is, you know, because this doesn't just happen to Britney. It happens to a lot of people. I mean, yeah. conservatorship abuse is, I mean, there's actually a documentary on Netflix also about conservatorship abuse just in general. And oh, no that way. documentary is, I forgot, I don't know what it's called, but I know I saw a tweet earlier or a few days ago. It's actually one of the top rated doc, uh, movies on Netflix right now. And it coincided oh. with, with Britney's yeah, documentary. Yeah. So, so. That so it, if it's the movie, it's called uh, I Care A Lot. I believe that's – or I, I, think that's I watched it last night. It was pretty decent. It was a pretty okay. good movie. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's actually about taking uh, – preying on the, on the elder, on yes. the senior yeah. citizens. And just, yeah. ooh, that movie will make you upset. It's, and and just it's called who, I Care A Lot. Just yeah. And for people who don't know, that, that, what you just said, the elderly. The kind of conservatorship that Britney's under is for the elderly. It's for people with dementia yeah. who can't remember stuff. Britney can remember stuff. She's been, I mean, she's banking, you know what I mean? So, I mean, so you just, just knowing that everyone out there, America, it's an effed up situation. That's yeah. all, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so let, we're going to move on real quickly. Trey, you were in Houston. Jose was in Houston. I was in Houston last week. We haven't talked about the crazy winter storms and uh, the nightmare and the amount of people that have died from the mishandling of this. So going into it, uh, I was talking to Jose about it, like, you know, okay, we're still going to do the podcast on Monday. We're going to have actually a lot of time trade. Then I messaged you. I was like, yeah, oh, we're going to have a lot of time. You're like, yeah, we're going to be bunkered up. We got nothing to do. Of course, I'm going to do the podcast. I don't think any of us anticipated no. that it would go like this, right? Like with Hurricane Harvey, we knew that it could get bad. We knew like because of what we've been through before, right, through Ike. Uh, we saw what happened with uh, with the Rita fal uh, false flag, but going back to Katrina, right? Even like we saw other cities go through it. We were prepared for Hurricane Harvey in that this could get really bad. 
Nobody was prepared for this. Nobody had any idea that this was going to turn into the bleep show that it did with ERCOT, with people losing their power, um, the lottery system basically of who got to keep their power on and who didn't. The Then the fallout of, hey, you know, when there's no power in your house for, you know, 11 to 36 hours, your pipes will freeze and they will burst after the power, you know, it melts a little bit. And then that whole thing, like there's not enough supplies. It was just a catastrophic shit show, man. It was so bad. Trey, I'll let you open up with your thoughts. We prepared for Harvey. No, we prepared very little for Harvey. Didn't lose power during Harvey. It was a great experience. Harvey was actually kind of a fun experience for us. We didn't lose power. We were cool. We were here. So for this one, the only reason we prepared is because we were a little concerned about the pipes and we're like, ah, oh, maybe mm. we should go get it covered up. And what's funny, going back to my TikTok, I made a stupid TikTok of us going to Home Depot and kind of, you know, getting ready for the storm. The only reason we did that is because we were a little concerned and why we were out. You know what? We're like, you know what? Let's go to Target, get some stuff, grocery shop, do a little bit. So we actually got some stuff and got some and prepared in that sense. We didn't, ex we thought we were, like I said, I thought I was going to be on the podcast with you that Monday. We thought we were going to camp out and just be chill at home. We lost power for 35 hours. Um, one night it got, the, the, that, the night that it went down to like 10 degrees here, I'm, I'm, I'm down in Pearland. So the night it got down to that cold here, it was at least 40 something in the house. Oh. Um, it hurt. It hurt. I mean, it was, it was bad. So I didn't want to tell my family and like my mom or dad or anyone, I don't want anyone to worry, but it was bad. And I was like, you know what, if it gets worse, we're going to go in the car and get the dogs and just go sit in the car and put it on the driveway. But like you said, it was, we luckily made it through. We didn't have any pipe damage. Thank God that that was kind of the, the blessing in disguise. Um, after our power came back on, we didn't have water, but it was very low water pressure, but we still kind of managed around it. So we kind of had, Thankfully, uh, I don't want to say like a blessed situation, but it could have been a tremendously worse. And um, yeah. yeah, like if anything, now it's just more of a lesson. Prepare for storms. No matter how much yeah. you think, yeah. it's not going to just prepare because you, none of us ever saw this happening ever. And I mean, yeah, it's a lesson. It's a lesson to be learned. Jose, your experiences was totally different. Yeah, I, I, it's funny because I remember... Last Friday, Lena, uh, Lena Hidalgo did a press conference where she said, hey, you guys need to prepare for this, like, if it's a hurricane. Mm -hmm. And I kind of, like, scoffed at that, like, come on, like, it's going to snow a little bit, really? Like, do we need to prepare for it, like, to, like a hurricane? Because in my mind, with Harvey, or not even with Harvey, with the tax day flood, we got three feet of water in the house. So to me, that's where my expectations were, like, it's going to be that bad that we need to be prepared like that. I was just like, no, there's no way. So mm -hmm. whatever, it just kind of happens, and... At 2.32 a.m. that Monday morning, we lost power, and I immediately go on Twitter, and I see the ERCOT tweets about rolling blackouts. I was like, oh, we're going to get them back in, t apparently from this tweet, we're going to get it back in 10, 15 minutes. And then uh, 6 in the morning comes, and we still don't have power, and the house starts getting really cold. Yeah. And I, tech I email my new job, and I'm like, hey, I know I'm supposed to start today, but I don't know when I'm going to have power. And then, obviously, there's no power. Everyone's waking up, so we all lose cell reception, and I don't know if my, my new job even knows that I'm alive or not. <laughs> so I'm, like, racing out. My brother's taking me. It's it's a disaster. There's snow and ice everywhere, but my brother's trying to drive me to somewhere where we have more cell reception so I can reach out to my boss to tell him, like, hey, this is what's going on. I don't know when I could start, and I can't get through to him. So we go through through that, and then... Luckily, on Tuesday night, the rolling blackouts start where we don't have power long enough to get really comfortable, but we have power long enough for the house to not be 40 or 30 or 40 degrees. And from there, we just got hit with just rolling blackouts for next two days all of yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. next two days. And then Thursday was the first day uh, that we, we had one blackout, but for the majority, it was it was all good. But man, it went for like for a while where I couldn't communicate with anyone. I couldn't even text Raheel until I realized like if I turn my eye messages off, the text will go through. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I, it was really, it was, it was scary, man. It truthfully was. I don't know what like the. It was the perfect storm in that, of course, we lost power, 
the water then uh, starts freezing, right? Or, or and then if you had pressure issues, you're not getting any water. And then on top of that, the ser- your cell service is out, so you're, you're totally disconnected yeah. from the world at the worst opportune time. You're like, what? I don't know what's happening. It was so scary. We got lu- we got super lucky uh, out in Richmond Rosenberg. Uh, we call it Portland, Portland because yeah, yeah because Portland, it's, yeah, it's blowing up out here. We've got Trey. You got to come out to Richmond Rosenberg. I got you, bro. Coffee shops, kombucha shops. We got you over here. I, okay? well, I, I, I used to actually work in Sugarland. I was at Port Ben ISD for a few years, so I would. We had schools in Rosenberg. I mean, no. yeah, that area, it's a bumping area. It's nice. It's, it's, it's nice. awesome. Uh, we somehow. I don't know how. I don't know what grid we're on. I don't know who's paying off who. We didn't lose any power before an hour. Like, I remember we when got you were, super lucky when you tweeted me and you were like, "Hey," you want, and I was like, "Dude," I was like, "I ain't got anything." <laughs> 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 he he sent me. He's, he sent me the text. He's like, "Hey, I know we're supposed to conserve power, but I think we could still do the show." And I was like, "You mother bleep! Like, I yeah. don't have power. Yeah. What are you talking about?" Yeah, I was like, yeah. I, was like yeah, this guy. I, I, I kept up with your tweets. I was like, "Oh, this guy, he's good. Okay, cool." Good I was like, "You him. guys want?" I mean, I was like, "Man, I'm I'm good to go. I got my water. Are we doing the show or what? <laughs> man, nothing." But it, it, that's it's just like you got lucky or you didn't, man. And yeah, then this yeah. was not only was it in the Houston area. It was in Austin. Same. They were going through the same thing. San Antonio, same thing. Dallas, Dude, my same parents, thing. my parents are in South Texas, Rio Grande Valley. It was happening down there too. Yeah. Oh everywhere. man. Everywhere. I mean, everywhere. And you reminded me the whole rolling blackout thing. I remember the same thing. I saw that tweet, thinking, "Oh, it'll come back soon." That yeah. night when it didn't. I mean, that that's what pissed me off the most. Now that I think about it, because we were anticipating the rolling blackouts. I even sent an update out to like just people on social saying, "Hey guys, set your thermostat at this. You know, we're gonna have the rolling blackouts. Just kind of you know helping spread the word." And when that didn't happen, that was kind of like, "What the hell?" You know? I mean. Yeah, it was scary. No. Man, screw Urkot for real. <laughs> yeah. Did you guys know Urkot existed before this? No, of, of course no. not. Jose and, I, did. and I didn't know our history of our power grid. Yep. I mean, yeah, I was going to say is, that too. Again, yeah. but you know, I mean, hey. I, uh, I told my I told my brother, I'm so tired of finding out how stupid Texas is through natural disasters. <laughs> Like I'm so tired of that. Please <laughs> one upping our our dumbassness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our dumbassery. Crazy. Yeah, it's. I knew about ERCOP because I interned at a power co- or like one of those power uh, electric providers. My freshman year of college with one of my mentors, he's like, "Hey, you're not doing anything. You didn't get a sports radio internship. Just come intern with me. I'll pay you." I was like, "Cool." So I I rolled up there and I had to deal with ERCOT every single day. Like I knew ERCOT wow. numbers and stuff. And then he explained to me because he was at uh, Reliant uh, at the time. Was it no? No, sorry, the other one. Why am I blanking? The company before Reliant, the one that, the one that went bankrupt and took everyone's money. Um, um why am I blanking? E. No, e. Enron. 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 So he yeah. was at Enron and lost everything. Like my dude lost everything. Oh. Um, but they started a company with all the people that left Enron and they started their own company and. So like, you know, once it got it, it privatized, that's what they were benefiting off of. Yeah. But man, like the stuff he was telling me about, like what's happening here, I was like, damn, this is bad. How is this like, how is this happening here in Texas? And it made no sense. It still makes no sense right now. But uh, hopefully something will happen and we get some kind of reform because we lost lives that should not have been lost. There's yeah. just there's no other way to put it. Those There's people no should be alive today. There's no excuse yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, I, I'm glad, you know, if you're listening, I'm glad you made it through. It was uh, it was crazy, man. But ooh, I'm, I'm glad that's over and it was 70 degrees today. Jesus. It was Texas literally yeah. 50 yeah. degrees warmer today yeah. than yeah. it was last, last Monday. Week. That's man. absurd. It's wild, dude. Um, so Trey, we, need a, yeah. we, need, we need a new power company and we need to free Britney. There's anything we learned yeah. today. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we yeah. need. And anybody that has, anybody has those uh, like gritty, <laughs> any of those where you buy your own power, man. RIP to bi- you. Yeah, yeah. RIP. <laughs> but I think the governor said they're not going to allow the, the bills to be hiked up, right? Like I think you're going to pay an average. So if your bill is going to be $50,000 or whatever wild number, yeah. they're not going to allow that. They're going to, I'm sure they'll figure that out, but yeah, man, that's the that game was, you play What, they're going to put you on payment plans? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'll give rebates to the company. They, it's all fake money anyways. Who, who cares? Trey, we appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for spending a lot of time with us. And Thank you, guys you can follow uh, Trey on TikTok. What's the handle on TikTok? Trey.Serena. There he is. 100K Trey, my man. I love it, man. <laughs> Blowing up, putting out funny content. Uh, you're the best, Trey. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Have a good night. Thanks for coming on, Trey. Be there safe. He is, man. You- Trey's the man. Jose, we are out of time as well. That was a fun conversation to learn uh, about the Britney Spears documentary, the media industry, all that. Again, he was at CW. Uh, We we didn't overlap as much, 
but uh pretty pretty damn dope man um anything else we missed i want to do some quick things that we missed on some quick hits yeah quick hits i'll start unorthodox on netflix it's a four-part miniseries about a um a bride in the hasidic jewish culture Hmm. slash community not culture community excuse me in brooklyn and williamsburg yo it is awesome like they went all in is it a coming of age story like the the queen's gambit Mm, it's it's like the queen's gambit but not in that (laughs) it's not a coming of age it is a oh yes yes and no but it's more fascinating because they give you a full insight into that community and that re- that that sect of uh religion okay yeah, you want to talk really about good. wandavision really quickly without wandavision uh, yeah without any thoughts. spoilers we don't have to without spoilers. any spoilers are you happy seven episodes in i'm i'm happy i'm a little i was a little confused with how episode seven ended with the big reveal or mm. one of the big reveals yeah. but Do you know uh, that I'm, character I'm, did you no. know about? The, no, I didn't no, know. No, I, I had to hit up our buddy Michael Carroll uh, from Comic Cast almost immediately. Uh, yeah. and asking. We him, recommend like, hey. Comic Cast for a full breakdown of WandaVision because they do yeah. a spoiler, uh, a spoiler breakdown, right? Yeah, I believe and, they do. Uh, I I needed. I was like, hey, I literally like I watched it. I think Saturday night, and I immediately texted him like, "What the <laughs> hell is this? What, what what was this? Can you explain this to me, please?" Yeah. That, uh, a lot but of, very a lot happy. Of that is. Yeah, so very good. happy. That, what did you think about the two thousands? By the way, the the way they did. I loved it. I yeah. loved it. So it was, was a it was a mix of uh, Modern Family and The Office. A little uh, a little bit. The episode was before a little bit of Malcolm in the Middle with the kids yep. narrating and everything. That was really cool. Uh, I I don't understand the complaints for the early episodes because in my head I always kind of knew like we're getting to something. There's a reason yes. we are here. So I don't know. People just maybe are impatient, but they I can't relate to it though. Like if you didn't watch the you know the fifties or sixties sitcoms, you can't relate to that style. That humor, right? Like I think sure. these last two episodes are more relatable to a lot of people because we grew up sure. watching those shows. Um, but I like sure, the early but... episodes because, I, and I said this on no layup, so I apologize if people have heard this. But I think it's so fascinating the acting job that all the leads are doing in that. You have to maintain the essence of these characters that we know already, right, in Wanda and in Vision, but then also add the spin and take of the acting style of those years of TV. Like even this last one, when Wanda turns into Claire from Modern Family and just picks up oh, every yeah, little hilarious. nuance of her character, it's so freaking brilliant. It's one yeah. of the best acting jobs I've seen on TV. Yeah. This was uh, you actually mentioned it here too before I had started watching the show and you're you're spot on. The one thing I hate, I despise. People have no filter for spoilers yes. for this show. Ugh. Like the show comes out at I think 2 a.m. Central Friday mornings, and by by fr- early Friday afternoon, people are just firing off with the spoilers on Twitter. Like where mm-hmm. where are we as a society where we are tolerating this? It's not good. Just you just have to mute them or tell that person to. stop. Just tell them you that, have hey, to, stop. You have to. What are you doing? And I don't not know. Everyone, yeah. Maybe I'm doing it wrong, but if I if you know how you can mute keywords on on uh WandaVision, I mean mm-hmm. on Twitter, it doesn't help. Like it doesn't do anything. Yeah, you're probably doing it wrong. It's spelled W A N D A. Oh, that's oh. Okay. <laughs> There's no space between Wanda and Vision. Maybe that's why. Oh, it's not Wanda and Vision? No, it's not. No, no, no. That's what's happening. Oh, oh, well that's why. Yeah. yeah that explains I have it. to actually and, and you can put a time limit on your on your filters, on your mute words. Mm-hmm. So when I did it for the Avengers, like I did literally every character Avengers. <laughs> yo, that I even put yo, that was wild in the Avengers. Like I put phrases and I was good until the freaking filter time ran off. Like, you can put oh, a two-week filter. Oh, no. And I was like, what the hell? How did this happen? But, yeah, you, you got to do that. Uh, real quickly, Nabil says, uh, does this show get you excited for Falcon and Winter Soldier? Not, I mean, I think it's going to be – I'm it's sure they'll be different, connect right? it. Yeah, it's going to be totally different. I mean, tr- I'm uh, I'm excited generally because it's an MCU mm-hmm. show and – the future of the Captain America uh, character is kind of in limbo. Maybe we, hopefully, we get some clarity on that. But I don't think, like, I'm definitely not as, 
I'll, I'll frame it this way. I'm not as excited for that as I was for one division before yeah. one division came out. Okay, real quickly, uh, Titan Hugo says, are you watching Young Rock yet? <laughs> no. I have it recorded. I'm going to watch it. My daughter's watching yeah. it. My wife is. They said it's pretty good. So I'm going to wait like three or four episodes before I get into it. Okay. It looks pretty We've got to support The Rock. That's a future president. You're going to do yeah. that to the future president? You're right. No, you're um, right. The Patrice O'Neill documentary, Patrice O'Neill, Killing is Easy. It's available on Comedy Central, uh, a Comedy Central app or on Hulu. Fantastic documentary. If you know anything about Patrice O'Neill, it's really good. If you don't know about Patrice O'Neill, the best way to put it is he's your favorite comics comic, right? Like we hear that mm -hmm. a lot. He's your favorite producer's producer. I wonder who put that in their bio. Uh, I wonder Jose who took did. that off their bio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it is, uh, it's a really good documentary. It's interesting to look at his life from somebody that kind of knew about him. And then also I think from somebody that knew about him. So like I, I've, I've talked to both people and it's a really good documentary. Uh, one last thing. We didn't talk about this. Uh, Cancun Cruise. Oh, uh -huh. no. <laughs> oh, man. Did you that see, was awesome. Did you see the mariachi pull up to his house? Yeah. Oh, oh my him. God. He's going to have to move out of uh, River Oaks, right? Bro, why did he have a press conference outside of his house? That was dumb. That was such a dumb move. Like, couldn't he find a landscaping place to have a, have a press conference <laughs> the four at? Four Seasons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, – I mean, if you're his neighbor, it's got to be now. It's out there. I didn't know – I didn't know he was there, first of all, right? Like, I, I don't know where anybody lives. Uh, I don't think many people did now. But now, like, uh, it's all over. People are there all the time, and they are <laughs> protesting. You could hear it in his press conference, people saying, resign, resign, resign. Yeah. Um, man, it was – awesome that that was one of the best days on social media from the content <laughs> from the, his excuses from the memes his, yeah from people going hey hey we're not sure it's him yet we're not sure. oh yeah him. that was a thing that was a thing and then he addresses and like oh i guess i was wrong and like yes the next be, day yeah the um i saw it because of uh i think he's a state representative state representative Wu. uh he is on on social media a lot he was the first person i saw tweet that you won't believe which state senator is heading to Cancun right now on a flight. And it was a picture of Senator Cruz. And yeah, that's a, and then it all just it just pulled. I mean, people so just pulled up on social what media. Was, what was the best part? The, the mariachi, him coming back with a Texas face mask <laughs> or his neighbor's. Taking that New York Times money to send them, send New York Times the, the New York the, Times one. Did you see <laughs> the what the screenshots? The, did you see the group name? What the group name? Oh was? no, I didn't. I, I didn't. Actually... It was like it was. It was something Lovelies. So oh, it was. I'm weird. sure it was all the moms. It was all the rich moms. Something. I, I'm pretty sure it was Lovelies. I was gonna change the the group chat I'm in with Lance and John uh, and Dell from uh, Glory Boys <laughs> to that. But I don't think uh, – because they, like, they were going through – Lance has had a hard time with the, the winter storms. I didn't want to mess with him. But, yeah, it was uh, – I think the New York Times thing where the neighbors threw him under the bus. But there's also 17 people on there. There's 17 Who people on be? there. Exactly. I'm sure the group chat isn't active anymore. That's the next point I want to make is I'm leaving every group chat and deleting it hopefully <laughs> because, yo, know, people are going to throw you under the bus. I'm in too many group chats. Mm, so, and you yeah. say some questionable things in some I never chats. say I'm the most no never mm. never I never say anything um what else uh, yeah the, the whole thing was a mess the him blaming his daughter with daughters like hey look my daughters wanted to go what do you want me to do well, you want me to be a bad parent like dude it was yeah the whole, it, the, whole the whole thing was I so mean strange. obviously we all knew he was lying yeah but the whole I had to be a good dad and drop them off. No, you don't. You dropped yeah. them off at the airport. And then his, he couldn't get the story right. He goes, <laughs> hey, I wanted to make sure they get there safely. <clears throat> One, why are you letting your family go to a place where you have to drop them off safely? Okay, Cancun's not that dangerous. Don't make it like that. And then in the next interview, you go, look, I was going to come back Sunday. So now you're like just lying straight up. Like, come on, man. It was just a cluster. Oh, I'm so uh, – I was just – I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it went that bad for him. And yet, uh, nothing's going to happen. The, no, that's it. I mean, nothing's no, going to happen. Not. Yeah, like he still has five more years uh, yeah. during his term, yeah. so nothing's going to happen. Um, Justin, uh, Lazy J, not Justin, Lazy J says, how many points he scored in the Westbrooks? I uh, already gave a review on it, Justin, if you were here on time. They're awesome shoes. Great shoes to play in. So, Damn, Justin. Um, why are you, maybe yeah. Justin's working. 
Yeah, I don't care. Hey, maybe take yeah. off from work. Lazy J. We took off from work. Jose's not at uh, Foot Locker right now, and he's here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that joke so much. Whoever made that, I know that, you. Omar, I can tell. That's a, such a great joke. <laughs> I can um, tell. Okay, we had – oh, yeah, and then the old tweet. The old tweets. Uh, uh, Hefe brings up a good point. Yeah, the back people to back brought out the tweets. receipts. Oh, yeah. son. Him, um, uh, Dan Crenshaw, everybody, man, everybody. It was just – it was so good, man. The whole thing was a – that was – it was a horrible week. People mm-hmm. died, but there was there was something there, like the entertainment yeah. that we got from it, it, the friends we made along the way. That was the jokes good. we made along the way. Yeah, it was wild. Okay, uh, anything else before we get out of here? Uh, we gotta talk about uh, Judas and the Black Messiah next week. Next yes, week. yeah, that'll be our. Did assignment. you watch it yet? I did. I watched it. The first I haven't night. seen it yet. I haven't seen it. Okay, it's, good. It's a long movie. It's a long movie. <laughs> I will leave I... you with this. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield said afterward that he had to get therapy my god it was that intense of a role for him and i believe it he okay. was fantastic he is becoming one of my favorite mm-hmm. actors i've said this oh, before yeah. he's just so vulnerable on camera it's it's incredible um so yeah it's it's really good dude really good i'm not even hyping it up it is fantastic all right everybody who's listening we got to watch the movie, Get uh, hit up Raheel for his HBO Max login, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we'll talk about the, uh, Judas and the Black Messiah next week. All right, guys. Uh, we are out of time. We went long on this one. We appreciate everyone taking time to listen to us. Don't forget to support Alamo Remedy, alamoremedy.com for all their CBD products. Seventeen ninety nine for their uh, for their marquee products, the gummies, the lotion, the tincture, and then uh, the capsules. They also have that. So if you want it perfectly measured out, highly recommend them. I love taking the capsules. I love the lotion as well. I put it on after I play, after uh, a hard workout. It helps me. So uh, check them out. They're great, and you'll save 10% off with promo code... Unicorn. U-N-I-C-O-R-N. And don't forget to, uh, if you are into shoes and culture... Make sure you sign up for a Soul Savvy account, okay? It's a, it's a subscription-based model. But if you sign up now, I think you'll be in Jose's community, so you get to interact with him. So make we sure you do be, that. We could become besties. Yeah. Jose, I'm really happy for you again. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, a lot of people ask, we're still going to be doing the podcast. We might be uh-huh. changing the time. We're not sure yet, but we are going to be doing the podcast on a weekly basis, especially now that Jose isn't stressed out. It's great. Yeah. Like, and you have time. It's great. You're not in that place anymore. Thank you, Jose. I'll talk to you next week. Thank you, buddy. Stay spicy. Oh, I was like, oh, you're too famous and rich now. So stay spicy. Oh, <laughs> you don't pay me to say so savvy now. Oh. <laughs> Later, man. Later.